Today on the channel, I have a watch that is an homage to 1950s dive watches. Those popular dive watches, the first dive watches to come out onto the market. And this takes inspiration from a number of those watches. This also gets an extra hard coating. They actually asked me to try and physically scratch this watch on camera. And that's what I actually do during this video. So definitely stay tuned for that. So let's flip the camera and take a look at the Heron Mariner, an homage to 1950s dive watches. So if you look at the Heron website and you look at the description of this watch, the Mariner, they mention inspiration from 1950s divers. And they actually name two watches by name, the 50 Fathoms and the Rolex Submariner. However, I also see some inspiration from the Omega Seamaster, specifically in the hands and the bracelet, because you do have a flat link bracelet on here, very similar to the one that was used by the early Seamasters. You definitely see that inspiration from the Rolex Submariner in the case, the case shape, and then the bezel and the dial layout, you definitely get some 50 Fathoms vibes. So basically an homage to the 1950s divers, some of the first dive watches, which is pretty cool. And I like the combination that they came up with. However, it does stand on its own. It's not a direct homage to any of those watches. Now the dial here is a degradé dial. It's sort of a fumé dial. This is the blue version. You have applied indices and then you have a logo at 12 o'clock that is loomed. And then you have a sapphire bezel insert and the bezel is actually loomed. That sapphire bezel is domed. The sapphire crystal is boxed and domed. And when you turn it on its side, you could definitely see how nicely that sits above that sapphire crystal bezel. So really nice setup of this. You also have a signed crown that is screwed in, a screwed in case back, which is solid, and you get 300 meters of water resistance. You get that flat link bracelet, which I really love. I really love a flat link bracelet. I think they look great. There are screwed links and there's an extra hard coating on the bracelet and the case, and I believe the bezel as well. Uh, they actually asked me to try and scratch it and I will do that live here uh, without any editing. So we'll find out if it actually does scratch. I'm going to use a knife, uh, my trusty knife that I use all the time. It's my pocket knife. So we'll see what happens. Uh, it has a pretty nice buckle on here. I don't believe this has, oh, it actually does have on the fly micro adjust, very similar to what you get from like uh, Christopher Ward or uh, Zelos or something like that. So pretty nice. And then it is signed with the logo right there. It is a single flip over double push button uh, enclosure, which is nice. And then the case back is sort of stamped with a sailor with a cap and a pipe. I think they're obviously paying homage to sailors from the 1950s, again, in keeping with the uh, nautical theme, the mariner theme here, which makes a lot of sense. Let's listen to the bezel action on here because the bezel action is actually very, very good. It's a very tight bezel and has a very nice sound to it, but it's extremely grippy too. So uh, it being tight isn't a problem. So let's listen to that. Because it's tight, it doesn't have any movement in the bezel whatsoever. So it's a very sturdy bezel. There is no movement whatsoever, uh, but it is tight. So that is something to keep in mind, but I don't think that's a bad thing. So this does have an extra hard coating, like I mentioned before. Uh, and essentially what that is, is basically a PVD coating or a DLC coating, I believe that protects the stainless steel. Uh, and because of that, I'm going to do a quick scratch test. I'm going to do it on one of the links for the bracelet. Uh, I'm going to be using my knife right here uh, and I'm going to basically scratch one of these links. So I'm going to start right here on this link and I'll try and do a little bit of a close up or zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, but there you go. It feels like it's scratching, but it isn't, which is weird. So there you go. I mean, let me see. I'm going to grab a little polishing cloth here. So I did press down very hard. Uh, you know, if I did that on a regular stainless steel link, I think that would scratch and that did not scratch. So I am impressed. Uh, it might've looked like it scratched, but it didn't. It was actually just, I guess, 
nothing is there. There is no scratch. That's pretty amazing. And this is uh, a really nice knife. This is a uh, Damascus steel knife. So uh, obviously a very hardened steel and uh, did not or was not able to scratch this beautiful bracelet. I really like the flat link bracelet on here. Um, you have screwed links. Uh, you do have a chamfered edge on the buckle as well. I don't know if I mentioned that before. Uh, and the bracelet is basically all brushed. So very tool watch looking. Uh, the case does have a chamfered edge of polish. Uh, and on the bottom, you don't get that polish, but it's not roughly finished in any way. It feels very nice. Uh, the bezel is basically polished, but like I said, very, very grippy. Measurements on this watch are around 40 millimeters. So it's around 40 millimeters at that bezel. So 39.8 is what I have measured. You have about a 5.7 millimeter crown. I wish that was a little bit bigger, but you do have those crown guards. So it does feel a little bit bigger than it actually is. The lug to lug is around 46 and a half millimeters, 46 and a half. That's measurement at the case. Uh, a little bit bigger at the bracelet, even though you have female end lengths, it's like 46.9 millimeters. It's around 13 millimeters thick. It's actually under 13 millimeters thick, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 12.7 millimeters, something like that. That's including the boxed sapphire crystal. This is an automatic, so it's getting a Miyota movement inside. It's a Miyota 9000 series, the 9039. That's because this is a dateless diver, uh, which of course I love, so there is no date on here, which looks great. Uh, the Fume dial does have a little bit of writing on there. It just says Heron, and then you have their logo right there, and then it just says the name of the watch, and then of course, 300 meters of water resistance. That's about it. On my wrist today, I have the 50 Fathom. So this is an original 1957 50 Fathoms. Uh, it's an Aqualung, and obviously I wore this because I was doing a review on basically an homage to a watch like this or something very similar to it. So I'll throw these side by side for just a second so you could see what I'm talking about, or at least what they're talking about. Now this is around 41 millimeters, so it's actually larger than this watch, although it looks around the exact same size. Uh, it's kind of deceiving these watches. They do wear a little bit smaller than their dimensions, but you can see, you know, definitely where they're coming from and uh, they're obviously paying an homage to watches like these. There it is on my seven and a half inch wrist. You can see that it wears really nicely. It's a 40 millimeter watch. So this is really at home on my seven and a half inch wrist. That flat link bracelet is my favorite. I absolutely love it. Uh, even though it's brushed, it captures the light really well. Uh, I always love a flat link bracelet. Really good looking watch. Obviously all of the elements work really well together. The inspiration obviously uh, is really good. And there's the loom. So the loom on the indices and hands, very brightly applied, very liberally applied. You even have a little bit of loom on the lollipop on that second hand, which I really like. You have broad arrow hand for the hour. And then of course, sort of a fence post dagger hand for the minutes. Those are very nicely applied with loom. The loom on the bezel, not as bright as the dial. So that is fading a little bit quicker, but the actual uh, dial and hands are pretty liberally applied. I didn't mention the price on this watch. The price on this watch is $465 currently on their Kickstarter. And I believe that their Kickstarter ends sometime next week. So if you are interested in this watch, definitely jump on this watch as soon as you can. Uh, because the Kickstarter will be closing up pretty soon. And I think that price is actually a really good price for a watch that looks this good uh, and obviously has a Miyota 9039. And of course, that extra hard coating that does work. So I did prove that in this video, uh, which is pretty cool. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. Of course, an homage to a bunch of different watches. It's not a direct homage to anything or any one watch from the 1950s. I think it's a design that works and I think they did a pretty good job at sort of making it a little bit different so that it's not just a direct homage to one watch. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I wanna hear from you guys. Please also don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It's super helpful to the channel and I very much appreciate it. Anyway guys, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.